Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative and in this tutorial I'm giving you a little troubleshooting tip. How to check for errors and warnings in your browser developer tools. So this is a really useful skill to have and I'm not going to teach you how to solve the errors but I'm going to show you how to check them and you're going to feel a little bit smarter and be um, a little more useful when you're troubleshooting a website. I do have a written blog post here on our blog if you wanted to check that out and follow that along. So yeah, it's just a skill of checking the console that um, surprisingly not everyone knows how to do and that's okay, that's okay. But after this video, you will know how and you're going to feel a little bit more equipped. You're gonna feel like maybe you have a little bit more of a web, web uh, developer superpower that you didn't know that you could have. Um, so let's let's look at this. So first of all, like what are we even talking about? Well, in browsers there are developer tools. Now you may say, "Well, I'm not a developer." That's okay. If you're working on your website, adding content, images, text, or maybe you're building the whole layout in Divi, or if you're a developer, you know, it, either way, it doesn't matter. You can use these quote developer tools in the browser. So every browser comes with this a whole lot of tools and because uh, <clears throat> the browser is really what's like rendering right it's rendering your website so it knows a lot about what's going on with your website because it's it's rendering all of those files you know there's that JavaScript and HTML and CSS and PHP and all that stuff it's rendering all of that for the visitor here on the front end so if there are errors in the code, the browser is going to know about it. So sometimes you may be facing just some issue and you're stuck and it's like, ugh, and this will help you know why. So opening the developer tools is the first step here. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, I, I guess out of habit, I've always just used the right click menu. So, you know, right click with your mouse and go down to inspect and then this will pop out. It will either be on the right side of your screen or it may be at the bottom depending how you have it set like right here. So here I can move it to the bottom and to the side and I can even resize it a little bit. But that's the, the gist of it. I can close it right there. Now again that was right click and then inspect and that's just how you get there. It's using that menu. Now you can also um, do the keyboard shortcuts now if you're on Windows it's like control shift J and there you go that's gonna jump literally to the console like we we're talking about where when I did inspect it jumped to the elements tab which is fine like a lot of times I want to inspect something so I'll click this and say oh what's this paragraph you know and then I can inspect the code and all that but for uh, the shortcut control shift J it literally goes right to the console tab, which is super nice. Now, also, I think I think this works for most browsers. You can try it, uh, but F12, yeah. So for me, um, it happens to work great. I'm, I'm in Chrome and I'm on Windows. I don't know how that differs on yours, but F12 is opening up the console very where very well. Now my finger is usually not there, but that is pretty quick. Maybe I should train my finger to jump over there. So that's how you open the thing up. Now, what about actually checking for errors? And, and just to be clear, like don't feel overwhelmed. There's gonna be a lot of things in there that are going to feel overwhelming for sure, but don't worry about that. If you were to click inspect and come in here, you will have to find the console tab. Now watch this, if I make this smaller, see how they all kind of disappeared? So you may have to like go up to this thing. Now here I can see this like drop down of of all these things, application, performance, sources, all that. Here I could click console if it's not um, like visible like that. But again, the shortcuts open to the console tab. Now this stuff here, this is actually some good uh, educational things that are showing. Um, but we'll get to that. What will you find in here? Well, you can see these little red things. Those don't look good, do they? Something is wrong. There's a red X and then it says uncall it and there's all this scary you know, code talk. So don't worry. <laughs> it's like I have to jump ahead for this one. Um, this is actually coming from an error in one of my Chrome extensions. 
Um, that's something I listed at the bottom to be aware of, so I'll just talk about it now. Sometimes there will be errors in your Chrome extension, which will show in the console. So you have to be careful. Like I may originally look at this and be like, oh, these are on my website here. What are these errors on my website? But they're not. They're actually in the um, Chrome extension. So you can just like disable all of your Chrome extensions temporarily. Maybe you have a tool like this one, Extensify, where I could literally toggle those off. I did hear that Chrome is getting the feature to disable them all quickly, so that's cool. Um, what else will you find? You may find warnings in here. Now, we did a tutorial on this one here, how to fix the mixed content error. That's a big one you may find. So I had a, this whole tutorial now. Like, if you see that little thing, I'll just search for some of these things and show you pictures of them. So, like, here's a picture that you may see. Mixed content. Um, oops. Yeah. So the uh, mixed content, the page at such and such, you know, was loaded over HTTPS. And this is in a yellow warning icon. So a warning isn't as serious as an error, but it's something that needs your attention. So that's something that you may see. Um, now this one here is a war is an actual red warning. These are just examples of what you may see. And while we're here, why don't we just say, um, over console error to show you more pictures of what you may see. You, you could see all kinds of things like this, right? Like the yellow errors and then the red axes for various things. And like here, like here's a really good example. Failed to load resource. The server responded with a status of 500. That's one of my points actually down here is actually checking any error number that you see. Like what, what's, an, what's a 500 error? We'll, we'll go to Google or wherever and say, um, 500 error, you know, and you're going to get all kind of stuff like, oh, the server prevented from filling the request. Oh, so that means the server is actually blocking this from happening. Now, you know, now you don't need to contact me or some other developer because it's like, oh, it's the server. I need to contact my hosting provider. So things like that are really helpful. Now you know who to contact. Um, so research any numbers. I feel like I'm doing this backwards, but <laughs> research any numbers. And another thing that I'll say is follow the path. Just today, I had a customer and they sent me this. They're like, hey, you know, we're getting a warning with your plugin. And I'm like, I'm, I go to the link and I check it. I'm like curious, like, oh, I wonder what's wrong. And I see this warning, trying to offset a right there valid domain dot com. And I, you know, didn't want to tell you which domain it was. WP content themes Divi. So I'm like, huh, this isn't my, this is not my plugin. This is literally the Divi theme ePanel custom functions dot PHP line 69. Well, that's Divi. So I wrote back and said, you know, I can check, I checked the console. The error is coming from Divi. It's not from our plugin. So you need to contact them. Just that little thing. If the customer had known to check the path of that, they could have, even if they didn't really understand it, they could have been like, oh, I see like Divi themes. Now, if it would have said, if it would have said WP content, plugins, you know, Nelson's plugin name, oh, well then they're like, oh, we got to contact Nelson because there's some error that I can see that is following this path. It's in one of his plugins. There, now we all know everyone's happy. Um, that Think of the time that could have saved me and that person if they had been like just directly contacted Elegant Themes instead of contacting me and then waiting and then me getting back and then them waiting and then them checking it and maybe they had the issue the whole time. Now they gotta contact Elegant Themes. It could be a whole day wasted if they had just checked the console. That's why this is really important. To, like it's just a basic skill to learn. Um, that's it. I'm, I'll keep rambling if, if we, if I don't stop, but that that's really what I'm trying to get at. I say this a couple of times, you know, uh, in fact, I did have a little thing here. This is tutorial was not intended to teach you how to read the warnings and errors, but rather to introduce you to them and encourage you to check carefully um, for at least some clues. Like you're seeing an error, like, like in this screenshot, uh, wherever that was, like, that's a really good clue be like, oh, that's from the server. Sometimes it'll be like um, a 504, it timed out, you know, whatever was trying to process, maybe the Divi Builder was trying to load and it timed out because the hosting server 
only allows you know a certain timeout limit. Well, now you know. Now instead of even contacting Elegant Themes, you can contact the host and say, "Can you increase the, the timeout limit?" Things like that. See, a lot of times you're not going to know what these errors are all about. That's okay. I'm suggesting to just look for clues as like the most basic troubleshooting step. Um, you know, if you're using one of my plugins or Divi or any other plugin from another creator and you're suspecting that, hey, we're having this problem, checking that can really, really help. I had someone today who had another issue very similar where I had to reply and like, oh, well, I can check the console and I can see the error. It was actually our carousel plugin. The SiteGround optimizer was set to combine JavaScript files and it was combining our code and making it not work. And I could see the error in the console and I could write back and say, oh, well, here's the error that I can see what it's from. It's not actually our plugin doing it. It's actually, it's like our plugin is being attacked by the outside source. So you got to go to them and have them like ex exclude it and whatever. And just another great example of, of that basic troubleshooting step that could have saved both of us time. So I probably sound like I'm complaining about support, but I'm not. I'm just saying like, think about how this will help you. Um, something's not working on your site. Why is this button doing this? Or why is this doing that? Check the console. <laughs> Always. Even just in Divi, like, um, oh, the, um, another good one is like when you're trying to like import a layout or something and it's just sitting there. It's not importing, you know, like a, a Divi layout. You can actually enable the developer tools and check the console and it may give you like a timeout error or some error that you can now when you contact elegant themes you can sound really smart and be like yeah I check the console and I see this error in the Divi theme and they you know it'll save a back and forth with them okay so um, this is going to be all around helpful for you to learn for for yourself for your clients for you know everyone <laughs> So I hope you enjoy this. Um, we have a whole series now on troubleshooting, how to fix almost anything in Divi. We have a whole series on it, so check it out. And that's going to be really helpful. That's our most popular tutorial and because um, it's something that um, everyone faces, little things here and there. A lot of times it's server issues. A lot of times it's hosting and, and you know clearing the cache, whatever it is. So check some of those things out. and. Hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you in the next one.